pleasant environment, get ready for a healthy activity. Friendly atmosphere yields tremendous output. Poor surroundings, challenges of today's world. Melting glaciers, global warming is increasing. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Umeed karta hoon ki ab sab loog khairiyat ke saath honge and I welcome you all here today to the 33rd lecture of environmental psychology. Students, jaysa ke hum hamesha se karte hain, aayye mein aapko is lecture ke agaas par ek chota sa review deta chaloon ki humne apne pishle lecture ke andar kya discuss kiya tha. Taake hum apna ek logical sequence bana sakhe pishle lecture se is lecture tak. Students, last lecture mein humne shuru kiya tha apna naya chapter. The title of the chapter was Impact of Environment Upon Its Incumbents When we started the chapter, I told you about the contents and with that, I told you about the contents and with that, that in this chapter onwards, we will study different environmental phenomena and discuss which you have better way to understand that you have all the whole theoretical framework which we have studied in the first chapter, the second chapter and the third chapter and the third chapter can apply it. اور میں مختلف قسم کے انوائنمنٹل فینومنرز کو آپ کے سامنے ایک پرابلم کی طرح پیش کروں گا اور آپ ان تھیوریٹیکل فریم ورکس کو اپلائے کر کے اپنا ایک پوائنٹ آف ویو بنا سکیں گے اس کے ساتھ ہی ساتھ میں آپ کو سٹیٹسٹیکل انفرمیشن دیتا چلوں گا اور سائنٹیفک انفرمیشن دیتا چلوں گا اور مارڈن اپ ٹو ڈیٹ ریسرچ کے بارے میں بتاتا چلوں گا جو ان فینومنرز کو ایکسپلین کرنے کے بارے میں ہے لیکن میں نے آپ کو بتایا The most important thing is کہ جب بھی آپ کسی سبجیکٹ کو پڑھتے ہیں سب سے اہم بات یہ ہے کہ آپ اس سبجیکٹ کے تھیوریٹیکل فریم ورک کے حساب سے اپنے پوائنٹس آف یوز بنا سکیں اگر آج آپ یہ پوائنٹس آف یوز بنا سکتے ہیں تو یہ کل آپ کو فیوچر میں آپ کی ریسرچ کے لیے مختلف ہائپوتسس دے سکتے ہیں آپ اپنے انٹرسٹ کو کیری آؤٹ کر سکتے ہیں and you can actually decide eventually to get into higher studies in environmental psychology however if that is not uh, uh, something that you are planning for even then developing your own point of view will build up your understanding and start uh, looking around yourself in the environment around you with reference to the theoretical frameworks. Students, we last chapter in the last chapter two important phenomena. Number one, population growth. And number two, we have urbanization. Students, when we talk about population growth, I have told you that Pakistan کے ساتھ ساتھ پوری دنیا کے اندر پاپولیشن ایکسپلوشن کی فیس میں سے ہم گزر رہے ہیں لیکن یہ پاپولیشن ایکسپلوشن زیادہ کانسنٹریٹڈ ہے تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز کے اندر ڈیولپڈ کنٹریز کے اندر بعض ممالک ایسے بھی ہیں جہاں پر پاپولیشن ڈیفیسٹ کے اندر جا رہی ہے بجائے بڑھنے کے ان کی پاپولیشن کم ہو رہی ہے میں نے آپ کو لیکچر کے آغاز میں بتایا کہ یہ دو ڈائیورجن ٹرینڈز ہمیں نظر آتے ہیں کہ ویسٹرن کنٹریز کے اندر پاپولیشن کم ہو رہی ہے یا اسی لیول پہ مینٹینڈ ہے اور تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز کے اندر پاپولیشن بہت زیادہ بڑھ رہی ہے پھر ہم نے پاکستان کے اندر پاپولیشن گروتھ کے سٹیٹس کو سٹڈی کیا اور میں نے آپ کو پاکستان کی پاپولیشن کے بارے میں امپورٹنٹ سٹیٹسٹکس پروائیڈ کی وہ سٹیٹسٹکس نہ صرف انٹرسٹنگ تھی بلکہ بعض اوقات شاید ہمیں محسوس ہوتا ہے کہ یہ سٹیٹسٹکس بہت زیادہ سکیریفائنگ بھی ہے کیونکہ ہماری پاپولیشن بہت تیزی سے بڑھ رہی ہے اور ویسے تو کیونکہ تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز کی پاپولیشن بہت تیزی سے بڑھ رہی ہے تو ایونچولی ساری دنیا کی پاپولیشن تیزی سے بڑھ رہی ہے اور یہاں پر میں نے آپ کو بتایا کہ تقریباً ستر سال کے اندر دنیا کی پاپولیشن چار گناہ زیادہ ہو سکتی ہے سو ای جنٹل مین ہو از گوئنگ ٹو لیو اپ ٹو دی ایج آف سیونٹی ایئرس کین ایکچولی سی دا پاپولیشن بینگ کوڈرپلڈ ان ہز لائف ٹائم پاپولیشن گروتھ کے ساتھ ساتھ امپورٹنٹ بات یہ ہے کہ نہ صرف پاپولیشن گرو کر رہی ہے بلکہ Population growth is following the trend of urbanization. What is urbanization? I told you that in its simplest terms, we try to see urbanization as uh, people moving from uh, rural areas to urban areas. That might be called urbanization. But I also told you that there are different ways to see urbanization, which could mean that a certain rural area is gradually becoming so big with reference to population 
and it is spreading all over that it becomes an urbanized community eventually. And most of the times when we are trying to understand the concept of urbanization, the definitions are usually population-based. However, there is little attention placed to the space available to that little population. Now, urbanization means that the clusters of population will exist in big cities. I told you that people move from rural areas towards urban cities in order to search for better careers. So people not only come to the big cities in search of bigger careers, in search of uh, bigger, brighter, and flashier careers, but the problem also lies within the rural areas. It has been observed that third world countries ke under the agri-economy that, that does not enjoy a very sophisticated baseline structure. And once the agricultural community does not have that uh, baseline infrastructure available to them upon which to build up their lives, then that means they would gradually be looking for more opportunities in order to live their lives in a better way. So there could be more than one reason that people are shifting from rural areas towards urban areas. The problem is that when so many people are moving towards urban areas, we find out that the urban areas get choked because a lot of population comes in and starts living over there. Here we students have urban areas ke multiple directions mein uneven directions mein spread hona aur is vicious cycle ko gaur se study kiya hame ye pata chala ki jab kisi ek shehar ke andar mukhtalif ilakon se log aakar wahan par rehna shuru kar dete hain to shehar ka jo central ilaka hota hai wahan par sara load padta hai jiski wajah se bahut zyada noise aur pollution create hoti hai is surat e hal ke andar jo affluent uh, families hoti hain us shehar ke andar they decide to move towards the suburbs and they buy expensive places in the suburbs and since these affluent families have more buying capacity then they naturally attract different kinds of uh, uh, product manufacturing companies to start their own retail shops in those areas so we gradually see that not only a housing colony has uh, emerged in the suburbs but also a lot of infrastructure has started moving along with them very soon you would see that in a new housing colony their new restaurants start opening up established brands also start opening up their outlets in these places and eventually jo suburb ka area tha jo kisi zamane mein peaceful tha that starts moving towards getting into becoming a city so that's how the suburbs are also converted into cities aur jab ye cities bante hain then people again want to move out of the cities and want to search for new suburbs aur isi search mein mukhtalif qisam ke areas ke andar uneven progress hoti rehti hai aur shehar mukhtalif directions ke andar phailta rehta hai urbanization ka ek sabse bada impact jo dekhne pe aaya hai that is the growing up of slums aap kisi bhi duniya ke bade shehar ke andar chale jaye aapko wahan par slums bahut zyada nazar aayenge और हमने अपने लास्ट लेक्चर के अंदर देखा कि पाकिस्तान के अंदर लाहौर कराची के अंदर स्लम्स की तादाद में बहुत ज़्यादा इजाफा हुआ है पिछले कोई 50 साल के अरसे के दौरान और ये तादाद तकरीबन डबल हो चुकी है एंड वी आल्सो फाउंड आउट दैट इन अ सिटी लाइक कराची ऑलमोस्ट एवरी थर्ड डवेलर इज लिविंग इन एन एरिया दैट मे बी कॉल्ड अ स्लम स्लम्स कैसे बनते हैं वैन पीपल कम टू द सिटीज इन सर्च ऑफ देयर करियर्स दैन the formal structure can accommodate them up to a certain extent iske sath hi sath formal structure ke andar in logon ko career needs ko cater karne mein baaz auqat aise issues bhi hote hain that the people who are moving from the rural areas into urban areas might not very well adjust into the formal jobs ye example bilkul isi tarah se hai jis tarah pakistan se ya kisi aur uh, developing country se youngsters अपने मुल्क से बाहर जाते हैं और वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज़ के अंदर जाकर एडजस्ट होने की कोशिश करते हैं जब ये वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज़ के अंदर जाकर एडजस्ट होने की कोशिश करते हैं तो हो सकता है कि फॉर्मल स्ट्रक्चर के अंदर उनको जॉब्स ना मिलें लेकिन वो इन फॉर्मल स्ट्रक्चर्स के अंदर जॉब्स हासिल कर लेते हैं और फिर वहाँ पर वो शायद इलीगल रेजिडेंट्स की तरह रहना शुरू कर देते हैं एंड दैट मीन्स दैट दीज पीपल आर ओनली कंसर्न अबाउट लिविंग देयर डेज एंड नाइट्स इन दोज प्लेसेज so you would uh, find out a common scene in one of these developed countries that people from third world countries come and a lot of youngsters are actually living in one apartment and they are uh, sharing their apartments with reference to their time schedules with reference to their time shifts so one group moves out 
goes on the work and the other group comes in for the rest. And then the other group comes back from the work, this group who's been resting goes out for the work. So this way they go on living and living in a situation that can be called slums. Kachi abadiyan Pakistan ke andar pichle 50 saalon ke andar kafi zyada unki tadad ke andar izafa hua hai. And the reasons are almost similar. So the bottom line is that population is not only growing very very fast but it is also following the trend of urbanization. Aur is urbanization ke trend ki wajah se cities ke andar na sirf physical infrastructure ke andar problems aati hain balki psychological problems bhi aana shuru ho jati hain. Ab jab cities ke andar population bahut zyada hoti hai to naturally infrastructure collapse karna shuru kar deta hai to yahan par hame do important phenomena dekhne mein milte hain. Sabse pehle तो पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी के अंदर इंक्रीज होना शुरू हो जाता है शहर की किसी एक जगह पर पॉपुलेशन डेंस होना शुरू हो जाती है दैट मींस मोर पीपल स्टार्ट शेयरिंग अ सर्टेन एरिया इन द सिटी पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी साथ ही साथ क्योंकि ज्यादा पॉपुलेशन है बिजनेस ज्यादा है अपॉर्चुनिटीज ज्यादा है बिल्डिंग्स की डेंसिटी में भी शहर के अंदर इजाफा होना शुरू हो जाता है द पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी ज्यादा है दैट मींस दे नीड मोर वाटर रिसोर्सेज दैट मींस मोर एयरबॉर्न वेस्ट वुड बी क्रिएटेड और उसके लिए शहर का पूरा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चौक हो सकता है अगर उसको प्रॉपरली डिवेलप ना किया जाए टू कैटर फॉर द नीड्स ऑफ सच ह्यूज पॉपुलेशन इसके साथ ही साथ फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के अंदर भी प्रॉब्लम्स आते हैं वाटर रिसोर्स स्टार्ट डिप्लेटिंग और पानी का लेवल जो ग्राउंड से ऊपर आता है वो भी नीचे जाना शुरू हो जाता है सो दे कुड बी सो मैनी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स that the city starts facing when a lot of pressure is being exerted and you would find out these problems in almost all of the big cities all over the world lekin iske sath hi sath logon ko nafsiyati masail bhi pesh aana shuru ho jate hain they have certain behavioral problems also associated with urbanization the first important factor that we discussed was anonymity which means that a lot of lonely people are actually living in the city which means that all of the people are working so hard that they hardly find the time to frequent upon each other and these lonely people almost suffering to the level of anonymity anonymity ki wajah se it has been found out through different uh, correlational studies uh, that uh, anonymity could play one factor for the growth of crime because in a small community people know each other very well aur jab ye log ek dusre ko bahut behtar jante hain तो यहाँ पर एक नेचुरल सा बाउंड क्रिएट होता है टुवर्ड्स ऑल दोज वैगा बॉन्ड्स और टुवर्ड्स ऑल दोज पीपल हु वांट टू एक्सपेरिमेंट अपॉन समथिंग बैड इन इन टर्म्स ऑफ द क्राइम देयर इज अ नेचुरल बार ऑन दैट हावेवर इन सिटी पीपल आर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट प्लेसेस नो बडी बिलोंग्स टू नो वन नो वन रिलेट्स टू नो वन वेल द सिचुएशन इज नॉट दैट एट वर्स बट एनोनिमिटी प्लेस अ ह्यूज फैक्टर इन रेजिंग अप द क्राइम then there are problems related to crowding crowding means that more people are sharing a certain area that means people might be more close to each other than this is comfortable for them the example could be one gentleman who's been living in uh, uh, probably some rural area moves to karachi and starts living in an apartment building he finds out the people are very close for comfort and they are scooped up into small little dingy apartments where everybody is living their lives so these people might find out that their privacy is being confiscated does this remind you about a, the- a theoretical framework that we discussed in the past when a lot of people start living together when you are too close for the comfort all right put this question in the parking lot i'll come back to it with you then naturally pollution also rises up and when pollution rises up then there are physical diseases and disorders that are also on their rise there would be more food required and the supply chains for such food probably might not be very well in the third world countries so starvation might also be one of the negative outcomes of the big cities students iske sath hi sath bade shehron ke andar ye dekha gaya hai ki drug and alcohol abuse has been found more in the bigger cities than in the rural communities and uh, also there has been family disorganization like uh, it's been said that in the western countries the institution of families family is disintegrating people uh, living as family are very few than they used to be in the past 
This has been seen that as people move into the urban areas, some kind of family disintegration starts taking place because families go ek dusre ke saath mil jul kar rehne ka itna zyada mauka nahi milta and then things are too close for comfort for the people they are constantly working they are constantly taking different types of pressures so family disintegration becomes one of the major negative outfalls of urban lives also however it does not happen so frequently so students these were some of the psychological factors that people suffer from in the urban areas now let us move towards the next part of the lecture i have told you about two problems one is that population is growing very fast aur dusri problem ye hai ki population urbanization ke trend ko follow kar rahi hai ab main aapse ye chahunga ki aap apne theoretical frameworks ko yaad kijiye aur ye sochne ki koshish kare या ये एनालाइज करने की कोशिश करें कि इस पॉपुलेशन की प्रॉब्लम को और अर्बनाइजेशन की प्रॉब्लम को हम किस तरह से उन थियोरेटिकल फ्रेमवर्क्स के हिसाब से अंडरस्टैंड कर सकते हैं और कौन सा थियोरेटिकल फ्रेमवर्क प्रोवाइड्स अस विद द बेस्ट टूल किट अवेलेबल टू एनालाइज द एंटायर सिचुएशन देयर आर फोर थियोरेटिकल फ्रेमवर्क दैट माई अप्लाई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सिचुएशन नंबर वन इज टू यू रिमेंबर वॉलविल्स एडेप्टेशन लेवल थियोरी द सेकेंड वन इज मिलग्राम्स information load theory then we also discuss the behavior constraint theory let us limit ourselves to these three theoretical frameworks so let us suppose ke aapko adaptation level theory ko apply karke understand karna hai population growth ko aur urbanization ke uh, issue ko to aapke khayal mein uh, adaptation level theory iske bare mein kya keh sakti hai to shayad behtar ye hoga ki hum sabse pehle ye janne ki koshish kare ki adaptation level theory ये याद करने की कोशिश करें कि एडेप्टेशन लेवल थ्योरी दरअसल कहती क्या है इफ आई कैन रिमाइंड यू एडेप्टेशन लेवल थ्योरी मैंट दैट ह्यूमन बींग्स फंक्शन बेस्ट व्हेन देयर लेवल ऑफ अराउजल इज ऑन इंटरमीडिएट स्केल व्हिच मींस दैट दे आर नॉट टू मच अराउज्ड दैट दे आर नॉट टू अंडर अराउज्ड डू यू रिमेंबर दिस थेरी ना ओके अगर हम एडेप्टेशन लेवल थेरी को सिटी के अंदर अप्लाई करते हैं देन वॉट डू वी फाइंड आउट the some of the common things are that there is a lot of population in the in the city then uh, so many entertainment places then so much is going on all the time in the city a gentleman who comes from a far off village to say a city in karachi or lahore he might say that this city never sleeps even 2 o'clock in the night you could find out cars on the roads you could find out the food hangouts are open and a lot of activity is going on throughout the night so apply the adaptation level theory you will find out that in the cities people are constantly stimulated logon ko constantly stimulation mil rahi hai aur jab stimulation mil rahi hai constantly that means arousal level is totally constantly up and when the arousal level is constantly up then what happens very right arousal level increase hone ki wajah se hamare kaam karne ki efficiency level ke andar aur efficiency level ke andar problems aate hain jaisa ke adaptation level theory ke andar humne padha ke human beings best perform karte hain mid level arousal pe so city ke andar shayad mid level arousal ko arousal level ko hasil karna thoda sa mushkil hai because there are so many stimulants available in the city and when there are so many stimulants available in the city then people are constantly aroused now you can also apply the theory or the the framework to understand that when people are aroused that actually means that a lot of hormonal activity is going on people might bump into fight or flight reaction so you can find out the problems like ki log concentrate nahi kar pa rahe kisi job pe ya logon ka performance level low ho chuka hai so all these things can be applied to understand the life of a person who is inside the city now do you see that we can apply the adaptation level theory to understand the uh, the city life very good now let us move towards the next theoretical framework that might apply and explain something to us and that is information overload theory what exactly was that that means if more information is coming down our way than we can handle then our behavior then we simply start missing out that information 
which means that we are so much loaded with the information that we don't know how to find a way out of it or how to analyze it or what to do with this. According to the information load theory, the quantity and rate of stimulation that urbanites are exposed to exceeds their capacity resulting in information load. So another way to understand the city would be that with reference to information load, you will find a lot of people Jinko information load ki shikayat ho sakti hai. Because city is constantly stimulating them, city is constantly providing them with something. Now let us move towards yet another theory. Now which one is that? That reminds me of Prashansky and Eitelson's behavior constraint theory, which said the demands of city life limits an individual's freedom, leading to behavior constraints that can produce the feelings of loss of control leading to behavioral constraints. Now, students, do you remember I gave you an example when we were talking about the behavioral constraint theory that a boy living in the village, he gets moved to the city because he has to study in a university now. And when he comes to the university, he finds out that situations are so complicated. He actually has to work very hard to find his way into it and way out of it. And eventually he bumps into the behavioral constraint constraints, which means that for some time he would start feeling that he's kind of losing his control over the situation. And when people are losing control over the situation, what kind of psychological feeling do they go through? That means they're feeling frustrated. That means they're feeling depressed about the entire thing. Because the entire situation, the envi entire environment becomes so complicated for them and it is charging so heavily upon their senses that they find it hard for themselves to kind of control it. And that type of feeling creates frustration, anger, and remorse, dejectedness, depression. Now, can you correlate these feelings with the incidence of crime somehow? Do you think that a satisfied person who's happy about himself, do you think a person who's totally calm about the things, who has control over the things around himself, he has uh, some inclination towards crime? The possibility is very less compared to the people who are going through extreme psychological feelings, the incidence of crime in such state of mind might be more prevalent. There is more possibility for the crime taking place when a lot of people are actually going through such mental state. So students, you see that we can apply this theory also. At this point of time, it is also interesting for you to note that a gentleman, a psychologist whose name is Baker, he said cities are totally overmanned. In cities, there are so many people living together that the city's infrastructure chokes. And when the infrastructure chokes, then people bump into negative behavioral patterns. And when people bump into negative behavioral patterns, that might be devastating not only for themselves, but also for the people around them. So what are you going to do about it? So students, these are some of the theories that we can apply to understand the urban effects. I think it would be very relevant that we do a small comparison of urban versus the rural life. I have some very interesting statistics which in three areas ke under me pass hai. Number one is urban-rural comparisons. Number two is social behavioral effects. Number three is beneficial effects. So the first thing is simply urban-rural comparison. What is the urban life and what is the rural life? Here I will invite you to invite you to a small example. Find out a friend or a cousin who is in a rural area ke andar hai. and go and ask him that they are going to spend their whole day in which way. When you start to understand their routine, ke shuru kar de, then you ask him what kind of things are they interested in. What kind of tele television programs do they watch? What is their favorite pastime? What is their hobby? What sports do they play? You can ask them many different things. Or iske saath hi saath, find out a friend of yours or a cousin of yours who lives in a big city and ask him that what charges him. Ask him about his routine. You will find out that urban or rural life ke andar kafi zyada differences pai jate hain. Urban life seems to be more complicated. People seem always to be on the run. Urban life ke andar logon ke paas jaga kam hai zindagi guzarne ke liye. Lekin logon ke paas vaise bahut zyada entertainment available hai, bahut zyada stimulation available hai. 
Compared to that, when you get into the villages, you find out that rural life is kind of simple. Which is why, if you have done a long time in the city, you probably might find out yourself to be very peaceful. And there is darkness and there are, you know, uh, different uh, facilities that you are so used to uh, of using in the cities are not available to you in the village. You might bump into a different type of reaction. You might not actually like that place. However, environmental psychology is the subject environment human behavior and in this very uh, comparison we can find out that the environmental features in this urban life and in the rural life are two distinct and different types of features and they impact human behavior differently so it is very natural that we can always compare the urban life with the rural life and uh, for the start of it, Amuman ye dekha raha hai ki log jab urban or rural life ko compare karne ki koshish karte hain, they bring up their own points of views into that. They might say that rural life is very good, calm and serene, and then there might be people who might say that urban life is wonderful because you have all the facilities and entertainment available to you. We start our comparison with uh, the physical and health diseases that are found prevalent in the people of rural areas and the people of urban areas. Statistics shows that there is probably no uniformly worse physical and or mental health in cities compared to the rural life. Rural life ke andar or urban life ke andar bimariyo ka pattern takriban ek jaisa hi paya jata hai. There is higher rate of respiratory diseases in the cities. That is understandable because in cities there is a lot of pollution. Then Minimal differences in the incidence of stress-related illness such as heart disease and hypertension. This research was carried out, pretty old research, by Hay and Wontman in 1968. Then it is seen that alcoholism and drug addiction are more common in cities than in rural areas. It has also been found out that incidence of psychosis is higher in urban than in rural areas. This research was conducted by Dorinman and Dorinman. So students, when we compare urban and rural areas with reference to the health, disease, health and disease pattern, we find out that there is not much significant difference over here. There are certain diseases that are more specific to the city life and there might be certain diseases that could be more specific to the urban life. Now let us move towards the social or behavioral effects that the urban environment or the rural environment can create over here. And differences between urban and rural settings can be observed with reference to two important psychological factors. Number one is affiliation and number two is pro-social and anti-social behavioral pattern. Hum sabse pehle ye dekhne ki koshish karenge ki urban aur rural life mein jab hum affiliation ki baat karte hain which means uh, that people affiliating with each other, people relating to each other, the feelings of love and warmth that connect people together. These things can there differences hey, between urban life or rural life. And then we will see that pro-social or anti-social behavioral patterns can there city or rural life can uh, under kya differences ho sakte hai. When it comes down to affiliation, we find out that urbanites are less affiliative towards strangers than our people in the rural areas. This research was conducted by Macaulay, Coleman, Diffuso in 1977, then Milgram and Newman and Macaulay once again studied it in the same time period. They also found out that urbanites tend to avoid eye contact with strangers and are less likely to reciprocate friendly gestures than are rural dwellers. That means uh, people living in the cities are very bad because they have lesser affiliation towards other people than the people living in the uh, rural areas. Is that so? Well, these are the statistical findings. These are some of the researches that have been conducted. And these are actually two different behavioral patterns. In fact, it does not mean that people living in the city are bad or people living in the rural areas are good or bad either. It means 
that both of these people are exposed to two different types of environment. And since they have to survive that environment, there is different behavioral tactics that work on one place and different behavioral tactic that works on the other place. In rural areas, there are few people, they know each other, and usually the thread of community or the fabric of community very, is very, very strongly woven. In the cities, the, the thread or the fabric of community is not very strongly woven because there are people from all over the country who are living in the cities. And as we discussed in our last lecture, that people also might be suffering from the feelings of anonymity and uh, people might be feeling that there are a lot of uh, strangers living in this place. They might have been using this type of behavioral pattern as a protective measure to survive in the city. And which is exactly what these two researchers found out that city life ke andar, jo shahar ke andar rehne wale log hote hain, wo amuman eye contact kam develop karte hain, aur amuman affiliate kam karte hain towards strangers. However, jab hum rural areas ke andar jaate hain, the people do not avoid the eye contact and people generally tend to be more warm towards the strangers. There's an old adage that you might have heard that never trust strangers. Probably this adage came out from someone who moved from the rural area into urban setting and he found out that I cannot trust anyone over here. However, just don't think that people uh, can be compared with reference to being good or bad, but people can be compared with reference to having different types of behavioral patterns in order to survive different types of environments. So these are some of the uh, facts or these are some of the findings of the people who have been researching and trying to compare the city life and the rural life with reference to the factor of affiliation. Students, now let me tell you something about the pro-social behavior also. We might have some interesting facts to note over here. It has been observed that urbanites are less likely to help a stranger. This research was conducted by Galfand, Hartman and Wilder and Page, then Kurt and Kerr as well as Milgram. Urbanites are less likely to help a stranger. What does it mean? Urbanites are selfish people or people living in the urban areas are not good ones? It could mean so many different things. But it has been found that since in the city a lot of people are living together and people are from different areas, the level of anonymity is high, the level of feeling stranger is kind of very high and then simultaneously in city the stimulation level is also very high, people are constantly aroused. There could be the application of behavioral constraint theory, people tend to lose control over the scenario and since they are already losing control over the scenario, they might not use extra energy for the strangers. And if you apply the uh, stimulus uh, adaptation level theory, you might find out that so many stimulants are available to the people in the city that little energy is left for the stranger. Then, of course, in the city a lot of strangers are living and then people are from so many different places you don't actually know about them. You probably would not be able to trust, with, uh, trust upon them so easily. So this is one type of behavioral pattern with, uh, which has been found with reference to pro-social behavior. What is anti-social behavior? Anti-social behavior is exact opposite of pro-social behavior. Pro-social means that you are actually pro-people, you are towards the people, you affiliate with them, you connect with them, you relate with them. And what is anti-social behavior? Anti-social behavioral pattern means that you are against people, you don't want to connect with them or you uh, want to take advantage of them. So when we talk about anti-social behavior, these are all behavioral patterns that are made for crimes ki reason or can be crimes. Ho sakte Yapar, I have some interesting statistics for you. Clear differences have been reported between urban and rural areas in the incidence of crime. This research was conducted by Kartsman and Lavi and Fisher and Zimbardo. They have found out that in urban areas the incidence of crime has been quite high and in the rural areas the incidence of crime has been quite low. Now this is a problem. Shaharong and their crime rate Jada hai. देहात के अंदर क्राइम रेट कम है आपके ख्याल में इसकी क्या वजह हो सकती है थिंक अबाउट इट अप्लाई सम थ्योरी ऑन दैट और आई कैन गिव यू अ हिंट द फैक्टर ऑफ एनोनिमिटी माइट प्ले अ रोल इन क्राइम ओके 
Then, if you apply the adaptation level theory, we understand that people are constantly stimulated, their arousal level is constantly uh, high or constantly low, they are not performing very well. And when they are not performing very well, probably their efforts towards achieving certain objectives are not also being very, very successful. That leads to frustration and dejection, and that might lead to the incidence of crime also. Then, if we apply the behavior constraint theory, loss of control over things. A young boy comes to the city, wants to be a rich man. He probably uh, does not find good opportunities. He gets so frustrated and upset, and he thinks that, I don't know anyone here. This, in this city, so many different people are living. He might decide to bump into a crime. So, in city life, it has been found out that the incidence of crime has been higher than in the rural areas. And there are some understandable facts about that also. Taking kya shahar sirf negative jage hai rehne ke liye? Shahar achi jage nahi hai rehne ke liye? There is everything negative about the cities. Is that so? No, we do not mean to say that actually. There is, it is not like that, that everything is negative about the city. The city life is kind of different. Otherwise, if you would ask most of the people, they would not say that they want to live in the cities or they want to live in the urban centers. When you that they want to live in the urban There is an interesting fact to note, which was researched by Malton and Hargrove to say, the city actually provides you with all the infrastructure where you could become more sophisticated person in your career. There are so many different options available. In city, the business is going on. In city, all of the opportunities are available to you. So that is why cities are places where people actually find out more opportunities. When they find out more opportunities, they can express their inner potential, their inner talent, and once they can express their inner potential and talent, probably that might be a satisfaction for them. And of course, people make more money in the cities. So they say that rural scenes are substantially more likely than the urban scenes to be described in pleasant terms. Rural inhabitants are more likely to be perceived as friendly. This was a research that was conducted by Malton and Hargrove in 1987. Looks like this research once again is telling us that City is a bad place because a lot of people actually find out that the rural scenes are more beautiful. They find out that the rural people, rural inhabitants are more friendly than the city inhabitants. How do you understand this research? This research is simply a comparison that compares people from rural or urban areas with reference to behavioral patterns. So, as we discussed, that when you look at the city from the positive point of view, we find out that uh, much of the research starts with a biased and pessimistic assumption that cities are bad. Most of the researches have probably been carried out with a certain bias in the mind of the researcher that city is something bad, it's a bad place to live. And this fact was researched by Friedman and that's also quite old, way back in 1975. According to a Gallup opinion index, majority of the respondents indicated they preferred living in cities. So there are definitely some positives also attached with the cities. Life in the city makes an individual more versatile and adaptable and give broader perspective on life than is afforded in the rural life probably. So these are some of the ways the rural areas and the urban areas can be compared. And at this point of time, students, since we have discussed the cities, we have discussed urbanization and we know that what are the negative impacts of urbanization or positive impacts of urbanization, I think it is only more convenient for us to get into the heart of the topic, something that is so, uh, so much connected with uh, the topic of population and urbanization, and that is crowding. So from this point onwards, I would require you to have a detailed focus on the topic of crowding. Aye, hum ye dekhte hain ke crowding ke andar hum kya cheeze study karenge. Crowding ke andar hum ye dekhne ki koshish karenge ke crowding ka behavioral pattern pe kis tarah se asar padta hai. Yahan par humare paas kuch animal studies hain which are very interesting to note. Then there are human correlational survey studies. Then there are human experimental studies. 
and then social affective responses and finally crowding in the everyday settings. What do you understand by crowding? Crowding ka kya matlab ho sakta hai? A lot of people living on one place? Yeah, that's right. Very simple. Crowding means a lot of people are living on little space. When more people are living on little space, then that means their privacy has been uh, hampered. That means they are not feeling probably comfortable with each other. So, crowding is an artificial state where people are too close for comfort. Do you think crowding can impact human behavior negatively or positively in some ways? Kya aap by nature zyada logo ke paas rehna pasand karte hain ya aap lonely rehna pasand karte hain? Of course, you could have your own choices, but crowding means that you are too close for comfort with the people. Which means the density of the population is actually so thick and people are so close for comfort with each other that they are not feeling comfortable or peaceful with each other anymore. Students, if we have to study this effect of the population, then what do we need to do? Kya hum ye study kar sakte hain ki mukhtalif log jo is qisam ki thickly dense populated areas ke andar rehte hain unke kya behavioral patterns hain unke upar kis tarah se ye population asar andaz hoti hai naturally we can use many different ways to do our studies or our researches however it has been found out that whenever we are doing a psychological research since it involves human beings sometimes conducting the experiments becomes very very dangerous so the experiments are conducted on animals. I have some of extremely interesting animal studies over here which will tell us that how crowding can impact the behavior of the people. These researches are actually conducted upon the animals and usually huge caution needs to be taken when we animal studies results generalize towards human beings. But animal studies definitely give a direction Hame definitely ek, uh, uh, gives us a strong hypothesis that is almost there to be proven that this is the way human beings can also actually act. Animal studies ki jab hum baat karte hain, to yaha par do tarah ki researches ki jati hain. Number one is naturally occurring population cycles. This ka matlab hai ki naturally jo population cycles chal rahe hain aur usse population kis tarah se increase ho rahi hai, us tarah se animals ko study kiya jata hai ki population increase ki wajah se unke upar kya asarat pade and then there are experimentally controlled population cycles also which means the population is experimentally controlled there are certain conditions there are experimentally controlled uh, species of a certain animal there is an other group uh, which is not being applied upon any kind of independent variable which means that no uh, changes have been imposed upon this group's growth of population they let it happen very very naturally. So let us move towards an interesting study which is called Marsh to the Sea. This research was conducted by Dubos in 1965 and whenever we want to understand that what happens with reference to population upon human beings, this becomes a very very interesting research to quote. So are you ready to listen to this interesting experience? You can see an animal that closely resembles a rat. This is in fact a Norwegian lemming. Norwegian lemmings are small rodents resembling the field mouse but having short tails and far covered feet. They live primarily in the Scandinavian mountain regions. Lemmings uh, Scandinavian mountain regions ke andar rehte hain field mouse ki tarah ke hote hain bilkul rats ki tarah ke lekin inke fur covered feet hain aur inke fur covered tails hain. Lemmings ke andar ek behavior notice kiya jata hai jo Scandinavian mythology ke andar bhi paya jata hai that about every three or four years they appear to migrate or march to the sea with many of them drowning as the end result. Teen ya char saal ke andar lemmings ki population zyada ho jati hai aur teen char saal ke arse ke baad lemmings achanak ek din samundar ki taraf safar karna shuru kar dete hain. Aur jab ye samundar ki taraf safar karte hain to bahut sare lemmings samundar mein doob kar mar jate hain. This is very very strange behavior. Lemmings are growing up up to a certain extent they grow and then they suddenly decide to commit suicide. They simply move towards, uh, march towards the sea and drown themselves up so that they could balance their population. So what exactly is this? Do you think lemmings actually commit suicide? Because they are too much in number and some of the people, some of the lemmings actually decide to sacrifice themselves. 
uh, what is actually happening over here? इसके साथ ही साथ हम ये भी सोच सकते हैं कि शायद लेमिंग्स के अंदर कोई बायोलॉजिकल प्रोग्रामिंग की गई है जिसकी वजह से एक सर्टेन लेवल ऑफ पॉपुलेशन जब भी अचीव करते हैं तो समथिंग हैपन्स विद दैम एंड दे स्टार्ट मार्चिंग टूवर्ड्स द सी एंड दे कमिट सुइसाइड सो दे आर बायोलॉजिकली प्रोग्राम टू कमिट सुइसाइड हवावर एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्लाइड देर वैन वी डू द क्लोजर ऑब्जर्वेशन वी फाइंड आउट कि लेमिंग्स वैन दे आर मार्चिंग टूवर्ड्स द सी This moment is not very orderly. This is rather full of frenzy. As you can see the cartoon, uh, one of the lemmings is telling the other lemming, "He's a lemming. He's a lemming. He's committing suicide. My God!" So, what is going on? Is it a suicide or an accident? They find out that suddenly lemmings bump into a frenzied activity. Or is helter skelter ke under lemmings are. you know just madly running towards the sea or and some lemmings simply drown themselves in the sea so closer observation reveals that this is not an organized thing this is this organized thing this is some kind of madness that the lemmings are experiencing or the lemmings are going through as you can see in the cartoon rush is right rush is right so how do we explain that lemmings are prolific reproducers every 3 or 4 years they reach considerable numbers this increased population population density acts to influence brain and adrenal functioning which in turn is overly manifested in non directed activity they found out that when lemmings reach a certain level of population then in lemmings a very high level of adrenal activity starts taking place adrenal activity is very closely related with the frenzied behavior So biological pre-programming means that they simply bump into frenzy because of the adrenal gland the uh, glandular functioning and then in that frenzy they don't know where they are going and they don't know what they are doing and they simply commit suicide or they simply die drown themselves into the sea the question is do the human beings do the same thing you could see the picture on the slide human beings are taken as lemmings and the population becomes more and they are jumping into the sea are there any lemmings humans does the population create uh, some impact upon us well i can give you an other uh, interesting study that will take the story forward and this interesting story is called deer die off on james island this research was conducted by christian twiger and davis in 1960 1916 ki baat hai that four or five deer hidden were released in the James Island which was in the Chesapeake Bay off the coast of Maryland by 1955 this small herd had grown to the number of 280 to 300 jo char hiran is jagah pe chode gaye the wo 1955 ke andar taqriban 280 se 300 tak ke hiran ban gaye then a strange thing happened in 1958 half of the herd died taqriban 3400 hirno mein se आधे हिरन मार गए दिस वॉज अ वेरी स्ट्रेंज फिनोमिन दिस वॉज समथिंग वेरी अलार्मिंग दैट वॉट एक्चुअली हैपन विद ऑल दिस डियर हाउ कम डिड द डाई दे हैड क्रॉस देयर पॉपुलेशन लेवल अप टू बियॉन्ड अ सर्टन एक्सटेंड एंड देन दे सिंपली स्टार्ट डाइंग वॉट एक्चुअली हैपन विद दैम दे फाउंड आउट दैट द हर्ड एक्चुअली स्टेबलाइज ऑन द थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ एटी मेम्बर्स फ्रॉम नाइनटीन फिफ्टी एट ऑनवर्ड्स दे मेनटेन द लेवल ऑफ थ्रेश होल्ड ऑन एटी मेम्बर्स एटी मेम्बर्स यहाँ पर रहते थे और एटी से ज़्यादा जब भी हर्ट होता था तो हिरन बनना शुरू हो जाते थे सो वाट एक्चुअली वॉज हैपनिंग विद दिस डियर अ क्लोजर एग्जामिनेशन वॉज कंडक्टेड बाई क्रिस्चन ग्रुप एंड दिस इज वॉट दैम साइंटिस्ट जॉन क्रिस्चन फ्लाइगर एंड देव देविज स्टडेड एटीन ऑफ द सर्वाइविंग डियर दे परफॉर्म डिटेल हिस्टोलॉजिकल एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द डियर्स एड्रीनल क्लैंड थाइमस स्प्लेन थाइराइड कोनेट्स किडनी लिवर हार्ट lungs and other tissues the carcass was found to be in excellent shape throughout the only abnormal finding was increase in the size of adrenal glands in most severe cases adrenal glands were found to be 10 times the size of the base rate samples they found out ke jitni bhi heron ki carcass thi wo sari excellent shape ke andar thi there was nothing wrong their heart spleen liver everything was functioning fine and they had the right amount of fat in their body that shows that they were healthy deers 
but they found only one abnormality and that abnormality was कि जो हिरन मरे थे उनके एड्रेनल ग्लैंड्स नॉर्मल एड्रेनल ग्लैंड से तकरीबन दस गुना ज्यादा बढ़े थे सो वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग विद दिस टीयर दे कंडक्टेड द डिटेल्ड हिस्टोलॉजिकल एग्जामिनेशन दे फाउंड आउट दैट एवरी थिंग वॉज इन परफेक्ट शेप दे आर हार्ट दे लिवर दे आर स्प्लीन दे आर किडनीज एवरी थिंग ऑलमोस्ट अपेयर टू बी फाइन एंड दीज एनिमल्स हैड द राइट अमाउंट ऑफ फैक्ट इन देअर बॉडी and they probably would have been very healthy deer before they actually died but they found out that there was one abnormality jo deer mar gaye the jo heron mar gaye the inke andar adrenal gland ka size normal heron ke adrenal gland se takriban 10 guna zyada bada tha so how do you understand this isko kis tarah se samjha jaye adrenal gland is the gland that that controls the thinking activity that controls the behavioral activity of an animal so if the adrenal gland is 10 times bigger than the normal adrenal gland which is found in most of the deer then what is the reason for that you would find out that the christians crew came up to be forming a very interesting conclusion they said they determined that while they were in good nutritional condition their physiology indicated hyperstimulation from the stress of crowding and attributed the many deaths to this the thought heron overcrowd kar gaye the unhone apni population grow up kar li thi aur is overcrowding ki wajah se hyperstimulation thi you remember wolves theory adaptation level theory that when people perform best at the normal level of arousal at medium level of arousal in this case the deer is overstimulated which means he's not for, uh, performing on the normal level deer is overstimulated because of the overcrowding they are too close to each other probably and that creates stress and that stress actually leads towards uh, these biological deformities and eventually the deer actually dies so students do you find these uh, st- uh, research is interesting of course लेकिन क्या हम इस रिसर्च की बेस के ऊपर ये कंक्लूजन ड्रॉ कर सकते हैं कि पॉपुलेशन जो है वो बायोलॉजिकल स्ट्रक्चर के अंदर चेंजेस पैदा कर सकती है इट कैन कॉज सो मच स्ट्रेस दैट इट कैन इवेंचुअली लीड अ सर्टेन स्पीशी टू डाई यू फाइंड आउट वन थिंग अबाउट द एनिमल्स दैट अमंग द एनिमल्स इंस्टिंगचुअली कंट्रोल्ड बिहेवियर इज यूजली वेरी वेरी ह्यूज हवेवर when we come down to human beings we find out that there is reason and logic that is why human beings are more adaptable they adapt more and more they change more and more which is why human beings are surviving so however these studies actually point out towards one thing that more population if there is more population that definitely is some kind of discomfort and how are we going to deal with this we can talk about this in the next lecture hum apne agle next lecture ke andar uh, controlled species ki study bhi ek uh, popular control population growth studies ke bare mein bhi janne ki koshish karenge and we'll come back with few more interesting facts about it ab hamare paas waqt khatam hua chahta hai so if you want to learn about the rest of the interesting researches i can do that in the next lecture for you till then let me say goodbye to you with the belief that you will be staying all right and you'll take a real good care of yourself stay happy enjoy goodbye